Yeah, that's the sound of the new 2021 Porsche 911 GT3 screaming at 9000 RPM. The car has been unveiled without camouflage for the first time ever. So what is a GT3? Uh, if you're not a massive Porsche fan, basically a GT3 is a road-going homologation version of cars that race in, you know, GT3. Which means they are super light and they get rid of all the comfort-related extra bells and whistles that you find in the most equivalent road-going version in order to focus on what's actually important. Yes, performance. And with that, starting with the engine, you know, most current 911s use a 3-liter turbocharged flat 6 engine with different power outputs de uh, depending upon the model range or in more sensible way depending upon how much you pay. But the engine in this GT3 comes from the 911 Speedster, which means, yeah, it's bigger. It's a 4-liter naturally aspirated flat 6 churning out 510 metric horsepower. If you compare it with the previous generation GT3, it's up by, you know, 10 horsepower and the torque has also increased from 460 to 470 newton meters. What's actually awesome is that this is going to be the same engine that will be used in the 2021 Porsche 911 GT3 Cup. You are basically getting a race car engine in road car. All that power is going to be hammered down through a choice of transmissions. First of all, a 7-speed PDK, which is exactly like you get in the GT3 race cars because on the other road going 911s, you get an 8-speed PDK, uh, with the last gear being an overdrive. So why 7 instead of 8? Um, because that's how you say weight, every gram of weight matters, or in more sensible way, every gram of weight that is removed matters. With PDK, the car can achieve 0 to 62 miles an hour in 3.4 seconds and from 0 to 124 miles an hour in 10.8 seconds. With the old school stick shift manual transmission, um, yes, you heard that right, Porsche is also offering that for those who care more about things that cannot be put on paper. So with this manual, 0 to 62 comes in 3.9 seconds, but come on, as I said before, there's a lot more driver involvement which simply cannot be put on paper. So engine and gearbox aside, there are still a hell lot of changes in this new 911 GT3 that makes it significantly quicker than the previous one. Like, you know, how much quicker? Um, okay, so this one, this new one can lap the Nürburgring in 6 minutes 59.927 seconds. Uh, to put that into perspective, which that is around like, you know, 17 seconds faster than the old one. Other hardware changes include a new front suspension. Yes, this time it has a double wishbone uh, front axle from the Le Mans winning 911 RSR. This is something they have done it for the first time in a road car. Even the rear suspension has been beefed up with new shock absorbers. The car also uses rear wheel steering, which means the rear wheels can turn up to an angle of 2 degrees in the same or in the opposite direction depending upon the speed. Weight of the car. That has always been a big deal in performance machines. The overriding philosophy is that it is lightweight by design. So thanks to the choice of materials Porsche has made here, the body now contains higher proportion of carbon fiber reinforced plastic, which you can find on the bonnet or hood if you're watching from America, also in the rear wing, a bit more about it soon, and also in the front spoiler and optionally on the roof. And talking about the battery, we have used something called lithium phosphate instead of the conventional lithium ion. So this new one is like 10 kilograms lighter. First of all, that's awesome. And yes, uh, it seems Porsche is actively developing battery tech for the upcoming EV models. In fact, if you click on the top right corner of the screen, you can have a sneak peek uh, into the upcoming all-electric Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. Trust me, it's worth watching. And so coming back to this GT3, um, it also has lightweight glass all around the windows now. Um, the exhaust system is now stainless steel. So all this translates to the fact that the car weighs only 1,419 kilograms uh, in case of the manual version. And in case of PDT, it's 1,434, um, which you compare it, uh, if you compare it, is actually five kilograms heavier than the previous 911 GT3. But considering the power advantage you have and all the other hardware upgrades for better cornering speed, uh, it actually makes a lot of sense now. 
talking about the brakes, uh, something very crucial for a performance machine like this. We have up the front 408 millimeters instead of 380 mm, and shockingly, it is now 17% lighter than previous one. You also get PCCB, which is Porsche Ceramic Composite Brakes, as an option, but I personally feel it must be fitted as standard. And obviously, if you are going to spend more time on track, you better get that one fixed right from the dealership. So finally, the rear wing. Uh, it's not designed like that to just look cool, but it has a purpose too. They call it swan neck design, which allows more air to flow more freely underneath the wing to create even more downforce without drag. Also, the diffuser is redesigned and I mean, it's completely redesigned and it now pushes the car down to earth with four times more force than before. So in total, the 911 GT3 now produces 50% more downforce than you get in the old car. Um, talking about the tires, it now wears Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 RS and more importantly, all the tires now are 10mm wider than before for that much extra contact patch. Also, the sizes are mixed up. You get 20 inches of the front and 21 inches of the rear. So it all eventually converges to one thing. This new machine is made to go faster around the corners than ever before. And there is also this chrono package in this new GT3 that includes an analog stopwatch on the dashboard. And finally, you also have an option now to choose for something called as the club sport package. Uh, that includes a roll cage, a battery disconnect switch, a six point harness for the driver's side, and also a fire extinguisher, making it the perfect weekend track day toy from Porsche. Pricing and availability are still unconfirmed, but I'm expecting it to be north of £110,000 or in other words $150,000 for the Americans watching. Uh, keep an eye on this channel and subscribe if you have not yet already uh, because we are definitely going to bring up more information on this soon. And that's it. Please do let me know what you think about it in the comments below and also let us know whether you would prefer an AMG GT or Black Series instead of this one or do you like the Italians more shoot down in the comments below and you know what there are no wrong answers obviously and as always see you in the next one